Art became my refuge and my vehicle for liberation. Art did not abandon me. Art took me to different worlds and dimensions. It altered my perception. It always asked questions and left the answers open for many interpretations. When I learned how to expand the connotations of the signs, I discovered how to unlock their meanings to set the signs free. This ability allowed me to decode a visual and grammatical syntax. Once I did that, I was able to piece it together again and develop a new meaning. It was a journey towards mental freedom. I understand now, as I may have when I met Francesca, the search for light was a search for self. It's very, you see, what happened here, the, it just needed, it needed more uh, time, but you got the covered uh, shape, see here, it's yeah, like, a, like a, a, an imprint, uh, it needs more exposure, but that's the thing, you know. I mean, I come from Jerusalem, and as we know, many artists from Palestine, would probably tend to semiotics, you know, when they create their art. Meaning that they, they use symbols or things that are from our region. But they are only understood, you know, by a certain uh, amount of people. I like to use forms that are more of universal understanding. But the question is, once you use them, you need to make sure that you don't also fall in the trap of cliches and catch. So, it's a problem if you are resorting to semiotics in Jerusalem, and it's also a problem if you're not. first time, semiotically speaking again, I did use core elements that are being used usually by uh, artists from Palestine, like barbed wire. I've never used barbed wire in my life, but I needed to because that's my life. Because this is where I grew. I grew among, uh, uh, in the presence of barbed wire. I photographed what appears to be the separation wall. Can I deny the separation wall? Can someone tell me you're using, now you're becoming, you're using forms that are of Palestinian nature, so fucking be it, so what? I will not lie to myself. I grew up in barbed wire, I grew up uh, with the separation wall, I grew up in demolition land, so the metamorphosis does tackle all these things, but notice something in all of them, there is transformation, they are dissolving. Yeah, let's go. Mm. Sound is okay? Sound is... <laughs> now, people would say, why don't you photograph the separation wall there? Um, and my answer would be, I'm not a documentary photographer. I can photograph the separation wall anywhere in the world. And my point is, it's true the separation wall exists in Palestine, but yet it's also a psychological wall in the mind. And I left Jerusalem, the wall remained in my veins. You see my point? And that I had to deal with in a different way. And I needed to dissolve the effect and the affect of the wall from my body. So that's why it doesn't make a difference if you leave Jerusalem or if you don't see the wall, because Jerusalem can stay in the mind, it's a construct. The wall can stay in the mind it's also a construct, but I have the power and the free will to dissolve them whenever I want. That's why I think I reached my freedom, because now I'm in control of the process. The world no more shapes me. I decide 
when the wall is in my life and when it's not in my life. That's it. Khalas, I think I'm done here. For many years, I developed that notion for myself at least, you know, that everything is a mental state, that the place itself doesn't exist. And I never dared to photograph Jerusalem in my art. Really, it scared me. I would have been defeated, totally. That's why I, through the years, I only dealt with the side effects of Jerusalem, with the state of mind of how it is to come from Jerusalem or think about it or etc. For many years, I have stated Jerusalem was the capital of my imagination, but it was not there in my images. Now I feel I have the power, finally, to deal with that city. And I didn't just go anywhere. I went to the place I was born in, Villa de Rosa, Way of Sorrow, station number five. I went there, I knocked at the door, I said, hi, I was born in this place. All I need is to look at it, and I want to collect some wall fragments, which is the paint on the wall. So I put a ladder in that house, and I started peeling these fragments piece by piece. And the beauty of what happened is you take the first layer, you notice there is another layer, a different color. You take the second layer, there is a third layer of a different color. You keep peeling and then until you reach like maybe five, six layers. And this is like going back to the core. This is like I'm, I'm starting a new journey of discovering another Jerusalem. I'm looking at it from an archaeological point of view. I'm digging it to myself as an archaeologist, as a visual investigator. When I entered the Ein Karim house, the house that was occupied by Israelis after 1948, the first thing that struck my eyes was the floor. Many uh, Arab houses, Palestinian houses in that period, they used traditional uh, tiling and it comes with nice motives that are easily recognized. So I stepped on the ground, but I felt the ground was shaking. Hence, what I did later, I photographed the ground and I printed the ground on wall fragments, painted wall fragments, plasters, that I collected from the old city in Jerusalem. So I wanted to contrast the images I did in the house with wall fragments I picked up from old city houses. So the color you see is not because the, the print is colored, it's because the colors come from the wall. And it's funny to think how the colors in the wall suddenly become on the ground and the, ground and the ground becomes colored again because this is black and white photography. So the black and white photography is giving us a colored image, which in many ways it makes us think that we cannot think about life like either black or white. There are many shades in between and it is in these shades of between that many artists like to work in and I like to be in these shades.
So I need to coat uh, all the fragments with gelatin first. Gelatin makes them, it makes them stronger first of all. And it's also good when we use materials that, uh, that are porous. It will close the gaps. Otherwise the fixer, when I develop, will enter deep inside the material and over time, years, it will, the print will become yellow. But in this case, maybe I shouldn't care because it's nice if they get colored again by, by nature. However, I'm just being uh, very technical and making sure that they don't get yellow. So if I print now something on that, like the tile, the floor tile, it will look bluish, yellowish, and greenish. On the other hand, I also there is this wall paint, which is uh, plastic-based. And the old paint in Jerusalem, this is like very old paint, like 70s. This is an acrylic paint that came to Jerusalem maybe in the last 20 years. It's like skin, which is actually very good for printing. Now this becomes, as you can see, this. Here. Look at the, how it looks in the material. And I like that it has this archival look, it has this archaeological look, it has this ancient look. It's like it makes you think about the origin, even of the origin of photography itself. Because I see also my work like always uh, simultaneous talk, speaking about photography and my own narrative. Photographically speaking, it looks like going back to the roots of photography. And for my narrative, it's looking back, it's questioning the roots of the house. Who lived in that house? What was their story? What are these elements, these forms we're looking at? Why is there a spoon or a knife or a fork called UNICEF here? This spoon is typical Arab spoon because it's silver and it's big. I assume that it stayed in the house from 1948 because when the people ran away or were forced to leave, so they left their house equipment inside. So whoever came to settle in the house to occupy it must have had these spoons. I imagine, I might be wrong. And so it's like tracing back now visually the the spoon to whom it belongs. So. And now I'm trying to think because I know the fragment how it looks, which image would suit in particular that fragment. We go for this one, number five. Okay. So now we go again in darkness. Two, three. Then we take it here to the developer. This is uh, my world. Like this is where I actually be can be with myself because. When you're in the dark room, you don't speak with anyone. The only thing you speak with is the art. So you create a dialogue between me and the art. Um, and it's funny because sometimes you have an imagination how things will turn out, but then the process surprises you. And this is what I like about art, that it has that element of surprise. You see what I mean? I like it the way it is. It's not defined, it's not super, and this is what makes it unique in my eye. If we think about digital photography, that is limitless. This limitless photography, look what it gave us, this, which is a one-time original. There will never be an image like this ever again on Earth. And this is done from a digital image. So this is proves that all the debates on uh, digital photography are just nonsense, in my opinion. Nonsense. But it's, it's, it's what you do with the idea, it's what you do with your imagination. Mm -hmm. 